First thing the judge looks for is an overall evaluation of the balance and proportions Stand. of the dog. So the exhibitor is asked to stack the dog, as this lady has just done, so that you can see the size. And in the Great Pyrenees, you're looking for a horizontal rectangle, that is, coming up the legs, the, across the chest, to the withers, running back along the top line, to the tail set and down again, should be in the shape of a horizontal rectangle, not a square. You want to look at his angulation in the front and the angulation in the rear. The shoulders, put your hands on the withers, please. And he runs the front uh, scapula, runs down to the point of the shoulder and then back to the elbow. And that is mimicked in the same proportions from the croup down to the stifle and back to the hock joint. Those are the key elements of the dog as you're standing. The second thing that you're looking for is the balance of the head and length of neck in proportion to the total dog. Once you've done that, you would go in and do a hands-on examination to see what's underneath that coat and to make sure that what your eye is seeing from here is indeed what the dog is, how, the way that the dog is actually put together. Now, do you want to move him? Here we go. Nice and close going away. That's the way you want to see them. Not too wide. They should come together and converge as he picks up speed. You'll do the same with the front as he comes towards you. you see the legs are straight pillars. You don't want to see a lot of lifting or swinging of the front legs around. This is called a wicket. We use a wicket to measure the height of a dog. This part is what moves. You place the dog underneath it so that this comes down on the withers and you read the height of the dog off the yardstick scale right there. The withers is the shoulder. What we're trying to do is figure out how tall the dog is. If you can stand to the back a little bit. Okay, sweet. This height is 29 and a quarter inches. Great Pyrenees male must be between 27 inches and 32 inches. So he's right in the middle of what we find the Pyrenees in America to measure at. Okay. One of the unique characteristics of the Great Pyrenees is the fact that on the rear legs, these dogs have what are called double dew claws. Here, two extra toes with toenails on both sides. These are a symbol of breed purity. They serve no function other than breed purity. Great Pyrenees are described as a dog that is, a, is principally white in color or white with markings. This dog has a badger color on his ears and on the side of his face and head. He's got a reddish mark on his rump. And these markings are very key to the breed because dogs that carry markings always carry the best pigment. So as a breeder, you never want to breed pure white dogs to pure white dogs for successive generations or you'll lose pigment. When you're looking at pigment, you're looking at the color of the nose, the color of the eye rims, the color of the lips, and then we look at the teeth here. Oh, still got show teeth. He's got a nice scissors bite, and if you look at the palette of his mouth, he's got good black pigment markings again. And dark eyes. He's a very nicely marked Great Pyrenees. There they are. There's the alpaca being guarded by the Great Pyrenees. This is not a Great Pyrenees. Yeah. Hi, Zeke! 